I guess there's only one thing to do. Press on. See if I can find a way out. Hello, I'm Renovis, and I see you've woken up. If you don't remember, then well, last time, well, we kind of hinted in, headed on into Bendy and the Ink Machine, and today, well, starting chapter two. Gotta grab the axe, be ready to go, ready to do everything. Now, the progress to the previous chapter is sealed. This, I always thought, you know, it makes sense. But I always just kind of didn't like it all that much. It's a very personal thing, but it's like, you know, I always kind of hoped that once new chapters would be filled, um, you'd at least be able to go a little bit further back. But anyway, yeah, time to go further down. Utility, <laughs> further proof that everything's breaking. Um, utility shaft nine. More writing on the walls. He will set us free, but this time it's in front of a little tiny shrine. A little bit of foreshadowing, if you ask me. How did this place get so big? Hee <laughs> hee. That little clip shows that this. Well, Henry doesn't know it. Despite being a former employee, he didn't really. Anything past this point, he doesn't really know. I think that's personally really interesting. Get an amen. <laughs> yeah, no reason to be worried. It's just a little bit of ambient sounds. <laughs> Whoosh. It disappears. I walk away. <gasps> it's back. Oh. Further proof that there's something unnatural going on. Now, a little bit of interesting details. Back in previous versions of the game, this was a satanic star and then now it's just like an alchemic circle from like full metal alchemist kind of deal i think that's a little bit of an interesting change because um this is my first hello excuse me can, can you help me hello where the hell did he go yeah and that's why i just think that everything constant Oh, wait, you weren't listening, were you? Sorry about that. Um, ooh, bacon soup. Lots of it. Anyway, that is why, of course, I think the story has changed over time. Because it seems like an odd change to make, right? Get rid of a satanic circle and put it in, like, alchemical one. Although it does make sense if you consider that the story changed tone or changed somehow in between releases. Anyway. A little bit of any gate somehow. Should be a couple oh. switches nearby. <laughs> then maybe I can open it. Now this is a little bit of both cleverness and stupidity. I think it's very clever that you see the inky figure drop him right there. You see a bunch of bacon soup. You eat it all, and you see something behind the bacon soup. That's actually really good design, right? Have the player discover something, and then they'll figure out what it does later. Now we get on to what I think is less than clever design. Um, this inky pool slows you down every single time you go through it. And the other two switches are on the other side of it. So it's something of a pers purposeful slowdown every single time. Which is not okay. Second thing is that, well, there's nothing quite going and telling you that this there's nothing directing you towards the other boxes. I mean, you are directed towards the first box, but it's different enough that you wouldn't notice it. In addition to these two coffins, I do assume that the developers intended for you to walk towards them, to observe them, ooh, and then see the box right there, but I don't think a lot of people do that. 
The design of seeing the first switch was clever, but after that it was just a little bit weak, especially with this inky pool. Although the use of the inky pool was, of course, made better by seeing inky figure walk by and you wouldn't be able to catch up to him in time regardless of how fast you went uh don't quote me on that because well there are probably speedrunners of this game immediately who've done that Ooh, and the gate rises no that's an interesting noise don't you think really dark in here. So first, Joey installs this ink machine over our heads. Then it begins to leak. Three times last month we couldn't even get out of our department because the ink had flooded the stairwell. Joey's solution. An ink pump to drain it periodically. Now I have this ugly pump switch right in my office. In and out all day. Thanks, Joey. Just what I needed. More distractions. These stupid cartoon songs don't write themselves, you know? <laughs> a little bit of a voice. And remember how last episode I did say that, well, the record not only showed off the fan music, but was sort of foreshadowing? Here's what it was foreshadowing, too. Looks like the stairwell's flooded. If I'm gonna get out of here, I'll need to find a way to drain it. A little bit of not clever design I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. Every day the same strange thing happens. I'll be up here in my booth, the band will be swinging, and suddenly Tammy Lauren just comes marching in and shuts the whole thing down. Tells us all we're waiting the hall. So this is more of the same, setting up the oddness of the scenario, although this time it's the oddness of the characters. I did want to point out though, how all the different voice recordings have extra little bits added by the voice actors. I feel like that's good, but at the same time it's a little bit off-putting. And the music starts up, and the environment thus begins. This is where the chapter truly begins. So, I'm gonna say this. Um, I think this is a little bit of poor design here. In order to activate this, you have to go back here, and then Henry remarks how it's not going to work. Now, wait right there. What I was referring to was the fact that when Henry is talking, you cannot physically flip the switch. Back to the show! And you leave. That's what a lot of players do, but what you have to do is you have to flip the switch and then leave. And then everything starts up. But that's dumb. Right? Everything in this area just insinuates that flipping that switch won't work. And then it requires you to flip the switch to make progress. I feel like that's a little bit of dumb, dumb, dumb design. Ooh. It's 
Studios. Okay, I'm gonna go the other way first. <laughs> so, let's see. <laughs> yep. I still don't know if he's saying no or owl, but there's a guy loaded there who's just yelling out, ah! Oh, right, I can't go down there yet. <laughs> a little bit of just, you know. Oh boy. So, just more areas. There's just a lot more hidden here, such as the faces. This is fun. Interesting thing about this picture, it says happy, sad, disgust, angry, it's all the same. And it says, do not let Joey see this. Most people would see this and say, oh yeah, you know, this is just a picture, right? Don't let Joey see this. It's fan art. And the original fan art actually had a portion on the right, which had the demon bendy you saw from chapter one. That do not let Joey see this isn't saying don't let him see the picture at all. It's saying don't let him see the right portion of it. Another save point. Yay! In. Of course. Well, there's yeah. the pump switch, all right. That's one hell of a leak blocking the door, though. If I could just stop that ink from flowing, maybe I can get in. Yep. So I showed to get my dust pan from the hall closet the other day, and guess what? I can't find my stupid key. It's like they disappeared in the thin air or something. All I can think of is that they must have fallen in one of the garbage cans that I was making my rounds last week. I just hope nobody tells Sammy, because if he finds out I lost my key, yeah, Wally Fanks, awesome. I find the placement of this one a little bit weird. Since, well, this is a common theme throughout the chapter. That's just, I have a problem with it. You step into an area. Henry says, there's nothing to do here. And then there's something to do there, right? There's something you have to do. It's not clever design. It's forced... It's pushing the players away from an area that they need to be in. Which I think is dumb. Also, instruments. Oh, there we go. There they are. So his keys are in this area I just barely walked into. Can I just say, that's a little bit of just... It's something I feel neutral about. It's just another game mechanic. You have to find the keys. It, it helps you search out the area more often. Well... It helps you search out the area more thoroughly, looking for the keys and paying attention to the trash cans, but it doesn't serve a purpose later, and it's just kind of a time waster. Meanwhile, you know, since we're here, I might as well grab... Yeah, I might as well grab this. <laughs> Despite the evil connotations lying underneath that voice clip, um, it's interesting to note that when this chapter first came out, people started theorizing that either Alice Angel was one, Minnie Mouse from the Disney cartoons, or two, representative of Betty Boop, a female char cartoon character from an animation studio who sadly went under. They also had a male protagonist who, well, yeah, basically just kind of bit the dust. Wasn't as popular. <laughs> and now for one of the dumbest things of this entire thing. It's like, pool. And you can actually pay pool. No idea why. But... There's no rule keeping, there's no idea of this. I'm not sure this insinuates anything. You can hit any ball you want. You won't get out. This one's just an eyeball. And let's see if I can do it. Hmm, let's see. I just want to see if I could do something. See, just get in position and go. Nope, not quite. 
<laughs> you see that? So, previously, previously in this game, if you got one of the balls off the table, well, you would be able to knock it around. Be able to take it anywhere you want throughout the level. This probably had some circumstances that were untoward or that they didn't want. So, instead, they just disappear when they pop off the table. Oh, look at that. Bacon soup. Yeah. Lots and lots of bacon soup. Every artistic person needs a sanctuary. Joey Drew has his, and I've got mine. To enter, you need only know my favorite song. The banjo playfully plucks. The piano delicately calls. The banjo, once again, strums its melody. The violin shudders with a piercing voice. Sing my song. And my sanctuary will open to you. Okay. Banjo, piano, banjo, violin. Right? Banjo, piano, banjo, violin. Yep. So, just gonna save. <laughs> um. I guess the interesting thing about that is that actually, previously, the voice clip for the banjo once again, that didn't happen. Um, see, that whole bit is randomized, so you can't go into a sanctuary beforehand. I know there's something I've got to do in here, but I feel like I'm missing something. I like this. Also, if you look up there, you see two bendy... Two bendy statues. Cutouts. Cutouts. I meant cutouts. Anyway, yeah. Like I was saying, it didn't... It used to not go once again. It used to just say, the banjo strums its melody, the piano things, this beats, whatever. And then the banjo strums its melodies. Two bedding cutouts right out there. <laughs> and then, you know, it wouldn't say once again. It's one of those small changes, but I think it's kind of cool. He had to get in the same voice actor record a bunch of randomly generated lines in order to have it go, like, every single... Oh, there are two. There are two up there. Wait. No. I messed this up. Whoops. In order to have it basically work. Every single line had to be repeated by the actor for the banjo once again. The banjo once again. Right? The piano once again. The banjo once again. The violin once again. Because it's randomly generated, what instruments you'll get, they had to record every single line. Interesting thing about that though, that little animatic that plays, that's a little animatic that played called Tombstone Panic. Tombstone Panic is an official Benny, Bendy cartoon that was released by the Meatly YouTube channel. The Meatly is the developer for this game. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn on the projector and then go for the pattern, which is banjo, piano, banjo, violin for me, but it's going to be different for you. And now there are three bending cutouts. This is interesting. It should be easy enough to go and do this since it was the time between the projector being turned on and then turning off again was actually very short when it first came out and got lengthened after time. Mostly because you get combinations like this where it's banjo, piano, banjo, violin. <laughs> yep. Beforehand, that would have been insanely difficult to do in like the first few because since the, pian the piano and the banjo are so far away from each other, you would have had like no time at all. No time to do it. But with the length and amount of time for the projector, it's there. But yeah, that's the thing. The sad thing about the change with the projector is that, well, since the bendy cutouts only show up every time you fell, you know, you turn on the projector and then it turns it off and you went back and up and back it up a couple times. Not a lot of people are going to be able to notice that the bendy cutouts actually multiply. Kind of. Ah, uh, the bass. Oh, look. Alchemic circle. Everything's like, ooh, spooky. Ooh, spooky. Look. Sing a happy song. Whistle Mary Tune. Wait for his arrival. He's coming very soon. Ooh, lots of spooky. Betty plush. 
Spooky. Banjo. Spooky. Toilet. Toilet. Yes, this is indeed Sammy Lawrence's secret space. <laughs> I always thought the toilet was a little weird. One down. One down. Now the objective is to sign, find the second valve. Interesting thing I want to point out. It says Sammy Lawrence's... Ooh. It says Sammy Lawrence's sanctuary and Joey Drew needs his own sanctuary and he has his. I bet we'll see that later. Say hello. It's that guy again we saw earlier. The other thing I've got to say about that is that I don't quite like the way the enemies spawn, right? They spawn in a myriad of locations and then you have to go to each and every one. The game doesn't tell you this though. It puts a lot of ink spots on the ground which is like, okay cool, I know where they each spawn, I could go to it, but it doesn't, it's not intuitive. It doesn't tell you anything about what, about how you have to go to each of them and going to each of them would deliberately hurt you. Other horror games have ways of telling you this is where you have to go, and well, good, right? This is where you have to go. You know you have to go that way, but, you know, you don't want to. The ink is still flowing. But here, it you don't know if you have to. And the infirmary. Remember how we couldn't go down here before? Yeah. I kind of wish that they also showed a little bit more of that. Nope. Now that, I think, is a much, much more clever use of the enemies. Completely ink-covered area, and then an enemy just pops out of it. Oh no, there's no valve. Where did it go? Mm -hmm. The valve is missing. missing. But... They put it right next to a power switch. And you turn around and there's a stairwell going down. A little bit of clever design right there. Everything in one place. Make sure that the player will come across everything. <laughs> down here we're all sinners. Was that thing holding my valve? Yes, it was. The sheep will come to the slaughter. Now this is a very good lead up. Very good lead up to something happening. And right here... I love the quiet. And that's hard to come by in these busy times. And yeah, sure, it, it may stink to high heaven down here. But it's just perfect for an old lyricist like me. Sammy songs always got some bounce, but uh, if I didn't get away once in a while, they'd never have any words to go with them. So I'll keep my mind to sing and then, uh, my nose closed. <laughs> yep. A little bit of environmental clues. And then... Sadly enough, this is what the lead-up was, too. That was a good lead-up. You know, you have the pipe, you have all the ink, you have all the signs on the side. And then the payoff is this. This is a puzzle. You have to get that guy with the wheel right under this spot. Why? Well, let's see if I can get him in there right about now. 
Nope. I'll just show you why right now. Wait. Kind of, maybe. No, he's not in there, but I'll show you what happens. Yep. I mean, I'm all for a good puzzle. Don't get me wrong. But personally, I think this is a wasted opportunity. A huge wasted opportunity. Oh, there it is. Sorry I had to do that. Nice hat though. <laughs> a little bit of levity, levity, but honestly, yeah. Since we turned off the ink, we should be able to get up through those downstairs. Do you really think it'll turn out that way? There we go now, nice and tight. We wouldn't want our sheep roaming away now, would we? No, we wouldn't. I must admit, I am honored you came all the way down here to visit me. It almost makes what I'm about to do seem cruel. But the believers must honor their savior. I must have him notice me. Wait, you look familiar to me. That face. Not now, for our Lord is calling to us, my little sheep. The time of sacrifice is at hand. And then I will finally be freed from this prison. This inky, dark abyss I call a body. Shh. Quiet. Listen. I can hear him crawling above. Crawling. Let us begin. The ritual must be completed. Soon he will hear me. He will set us free. Okay, so, you woke up a lot faster than last time, whoo-wee. You're getting really good at that, aren't you? Anyway, I just want to say, um, that little bit always confused me. Like, at first, in the original Chapter 2, well, Sammy Lawrence just kind of stood there and talked at you, but this time he's actually interacting with you. He shows you where the axe is, which you just lost, I just saw. Anyway, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, some more ink placement, and you also see the ink machine dropping down.
someone there? I know you're in here. Come out and show yourself.